So if you're lucky enough to have just got yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, then this video is for you. I'm gonna give you guys 15 tips and tricks that you can do straight away so that you can get the most out of your massive display. And let's kick this off with a hidden menu and some secret settings. So first, go to settings, go to about phone, then go to software information and tap build number seven times. This will then ask you for a pin number to unlock developer options. Once you've done this, when you scroll to the bottom of your settings page, you will now have developer options. Go in there, find animation scale and animation duration scale. Set these to 0.5. Once you've done this, your phone will feel faster. If you and your friend have both got the same Z Fold 3 and you put them side by side, your phone will appear to be much quicker. Number two, power is the key. So the button on the side of the Z Fold 3, I call a power button, but it actually isn't a power button, it's a Bixby button. And if you're asking, what the hell is Bixby? Well then, like me, you probably wanna change that. And here's how you do it. Go to advanced features, go to side key, and change it to power off menu. Now when you hold down the power button, it will actually allow you to power down the device. And while we're here, if you want to remap the double tap on the power button, you can do that and you can map any app to it. I like it how it is on the camera, but play around with that, set it up in a way that you like. Number three, step into the laboratory. Now I'm not gonna mess around and run you through every single setting on the phone. There's plenty of other videos that will do that for you. Let's jump straight into the good stuff. So go to your settings page, go to your advanced features menu. And here we have another sub menu called the lab and honestly here is where most of the unique features for the big screen live and I do recommend you turn on multi window for all apps some apps already do this as standard because they've been optimized for a folding display but some don't and if you turn this on you can actually force some apps to do this as well but I definitely do recommend you test that one out number four heavy rotations so staying on the same advanced settings and lab menu go to auto rotate and just like tip three, this might be one you need to revisit over time as you gradually find out what apps refuse to rotate. Here in the UK, I noticed my BT Sports app wouldn't rotate when I turned it to landscape mode. So I ticked the box and now it does. Fantastic. Number five, the winning pin. Staying in the advanced features and labs menu, the setting at the bottom of the page is an important one. Switch on, pin your favorite apps. 100%, you should definitely turn this one on. And I'm gonna show you why this one's so important when we get to step eight. Number six, push it to the limit. So you have a true phablet in your pocket now. It's a phone, it's a tablet, it's a phablet. But the problem is some apps are not designed to work properly with your phablet. And what will actually happen is it will crop the left and right hand sides of the app, which works, but it'd be better if it took up the whole screen. So let's fix that. Go to display and full screen apps, here you could choose which apps you want to be stretched to fill the unfolded display. This might not always look good on some apps, but test it out and again, come back to this and adjust it the more well-versed you get with your phone. Number seven, multi-versed. So apart from maximizing everything to fill the entire screen, another good use for a massive display like this is multitasking. And here's how you do it. Open up your backgrounding apps then you can tap on the icon of the app that you want to split. You can then pin that to the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you can choose the other app you want to split it with, and there you go. Now you've got two multitasking apps. And if you want a third, what you can do is swipe in from the right-hand side on this little handlebar, which brings out the edge panel. From the edge panel, you can choose a third app to take up one quarter of the screen. Once you've got this set up, you can actually rotate these by hitting the three dots in the middle of the screen and this little circular arrow thing. When you fine tune it how you want to, you can then hit this other little button by hitting the three dots in the middle and save that setup to your edge panel. Now you can recall this setup whenever you want without having to do all of that backgrounding and choosing and all this kind of stuff. Definitely use this feature. Number eight, getting the edge. Okay, so this is an important one. In the same display settings menu, tap on edge panels. These are panels that can be swiped in onto the display using what's known as the handlebar, which I just showed you. Swiping across the side panel will actually transition between these panels. And if we go back one step quickly, you can actually customize the size, the color, and the location of the handlebar. 
I personally think it should live where your thumb rests naturally. So you could just swipe it in without having to stretch your thumb all the way up the screen. Also, you don't want it to be too intrusive on the display. So I've made it quite small and very transparent. Now remember that pin favorite app switch that I told you to turn on earlier. When you use your edge panel and you swipe in from the side, if you hit the three lines at the bottom of the edge panel, you can actually pin your favorite apps onto the screen permanently. And it kind of works like a Windows or Mac computer. It'll stay there. And that is really useful if you're trying to be productive and you need to switch back and forth between lots of different apps. So like Willie Do said, try it. Number nine, inside out. Okay, so you've got two screens now and you want them to work seamlessly together. So when you open an app, you want that app to be able to continue on the outer screen. Now, not all apps are gonna do this seamlessly. Some of them are gonna need to shut down and restart when you switch between displays. So here's how you can help those unoptimized apps work a little bit better when switching between displays. Go into display settings, go to continue on cover screen. Here you can select apps that you want to work seamlessly between the two screens just hit the switches. Some will work really well, some might not. It's a feeding out process. And we'll probably see this get better with updates over time. So again, this is another one you might have to revisit. Number 10, into the darkness. So now you've got two beautiful displays that support 120 Hertz. And there is a downside to this eye candy and it is battery drain. So this next tip really could have been the first tip because it's the first thing I did when I got this phone. Not only will it make it look awesome, but it's also gonna help battery life. And the reason this works is because the screens are AMOLED. Whenever there's black areas of the screens, the pixels are actually switched off. Therefore, your phone doesn't have to use as much power to light up the panel. So definitely switch this one on. Go to display and enable dark mode. And not all apps support dark mode, but if you really want to, you can go back to step one and the developer settings. And in the developer settings, there is a way to force all apps to use dark mode. Disclaimer though, some apps will bug out. 11, smooth operator. So here's another power saving tip in the same menu. Go to motion smoothing. This is a setting you don't necessarily need to change immediately. In fact, I'd say only change it if you think you're going to be out all day and all night without a chance to recharge your device. By switching this to the standard 60 Hertz display, you will notice a marked improvement on your battery life, although you will lose a little smoothness. So a lot of people don't realize this, when your eyes absorb too much blue light, it can really mess up your sleeping patterns, your circadian rhythm. Now, if you don't know what that is, Google it. But here's a way to stop that from happening. Turn on eye comfort. And you can even set up a schedule so that it kicks in at a certain time of the day. Definitely use this. This will reduce the amount of blue light from the panel at certain times of the day. And hopefully this will help you get a better night's sleep. Number 13, you might like notification lights. So here's a little trick. Go to settings, go to notifications. Here, go to brief pop-up settings and then edge lighting. You'll either love this one or you'll hate this one. Whenever you get a notification, you'll get this nice edge lighting on the big screen and the small screen. And one cool thing you can do here is go to color by keyword and you can key in certain words whenever they're mentioned in a notification, you can select a specific color. So for example, YouTube, I could select red. WhatsApp, I could select green. And you can even put people's names in there as keywords as well. So when certain contacts call you, it will light up in those specific colors. Number 14, enter the Atmos sphere. So hopefully everything sounds good so far. And if you're getting value out of this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, you will be one of the finest subscribers known to man. But anyway, check this out. We've got awesome speakers built into the Z Fold 3, but here's a way you can make them sound even better. And I recommend you leave this on all the time. Go into your settings, go to sound and vibration settings, then sound quality and effects, and turn on Dolby Atmos. Trust me, this just sounds better. Number 15, on the grid. So this might be an obvious one. The cover screen is slightly slim. And when you first get one of these phones, there's only gonna be three apps per row. And in my opinion, that does not look good. And I personally think if you're switching from a regular phone over to a folding phone, you want that outer screen to resemble your old home screen as closely as possible. And here's how you can do it. Hold your finger down on an empty space on the home screen, 
change the layout to 5x6 or 5x5, whatever you prefer, the icons will be smaller. But unless you've got giant fingers, this shouldn't be much of a problem. Play around with it, find what works best for you. I stuck to the 5x6 layout because that's what I have on all my phones. And I think it works really well here on the cover display. And you can also customize the grid on the big screen as well, so I suggest you do that. All right, here's a bonus one for you. This phone has five cameras on it, and you can take a selfie with the cover screen, you can take a selfie with the unfolded screen. But if you're gonna take a selfie, don't do either of those. Use the best cameras you have, and here's how you do it. Open your camera app. In the top right corner, you see this little icon that's like a screen cut in half? Click that, now your cover screen becomes your selfie viewfinder. So you can now use your primary and most powerful cameras to take selfies with. Now all you need to do is pull your best blue steel look and snap a photo. So let me know which one of these tips you've got the most value out of in the comments below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I've done my best to bring you some value in this one. And if you appreciate that and you just subscribed, like I said before, you are now one of the finest subscribers known to man, and I will see you in the next one.